I'm excited to be here at Gallaudet again. I got a bachelor's in linguistics and my PhD in psychology is here, so it feels nice to be home. So as you know, I work in the deaf lab at RIT, and this is my team here. I'm sure you're all familiar with the word autism, which was established in 1977 by Thomas Humphreys. He wrote his dissertation on autism and how their attitudes towards deaf people affect deaf people themselves and the, and the feeling that they need to be fixed. And the term linguisticism is slightly related to autism. And linguisticism is the belief that one language is better than another language. For example, many people don't feel that English is actually equal to ASL. Many people feel that English is more supreme than ASL. So we're going to look at how autism and linguisticism has an effect on somebody's resilience. And I want to talk about that term resilience a little bit. So everybody knows, everybody experiences adversities and different trials and tribulations in life. And the resilience, if you don't have a lot of resilience, when those adversities strike you, can really knock you on your feet and be hard to stand, stand back up again. However, if you have a strong sense of resilience and adversity strikes, you'll still be knocked back on your feet, but it'll be easier for you to stand back up on your own. So I want to talk about how those two words are related. We're going to talk about protective factors and risk factors. Protective factors are factors that help people develop a strong sense of resilience, and risk factors are those that might enhance somebody's weak sense of resilience. Do you think that being deaf is a risk factor? Well, my team doesn't think so. We know that there's many deaf people out there in the world that have a very fulfilled life. They're professionals, they're academics, they're very well adjusted to life. We believe that internalized autism itself is the, deaf, is the risk factor, not being deaf. This belief that if you're deaf, you need to be fixed. You're somehow broken or inferior. So we set up an experiment. The way that we measure resilience is actually a similar model to other models that have been set up within psychology. The way to measure internalized autism got a little bit more complicated.
We know that. We look at social constructs like racism and sexism and models that they have for measuring how that affects someone's mindset. And we pair that to internalized autism. So if you look here, there's pictures with little drawings. Some pictures will have something good. Some pictures will have something bad. And you'll see up on the screen a picture, and I want you to point to one side if it's good, and point to the other side if it's bad. Good. You pointed in the right direction. And very well, everybody pointed in the bad direction this time. Now for more practice. Good job! It was pretty fun to watch all of you pointing. Now we're going to do something a little different. You don't have to memorize these people's faces. If it has a blue box, it means it's a deaf person. If you see a face with a yellow box around it, that means it's a hearing person, okay? And again, we're going to have you point to one side for deaf and the other side for Good job, everybody pointed that way. Okay, that was all for practice. Now for the real experiment, which did become more complex. So we're going to have you point now. There's going to be images that are both good and bad, and deaf and hearing. If you see the picture of the drawing, it's going to be good or bad. If you see the face, it's going to be deaf or hearing. All right, everybody pointed that way. Good job. And we pointed to this side now. Good job. Let's move, move along. All right, now we're going to change it a little bit. The good and bad are going to be on opposite sides of the screen now. Let's go ahead and try this. So deaf is being associated with bad, and hearing is being associated with good, whereas before was the opposite. So the way that we score it is by using an algorithm. And it's actually scoring based on how fast you can give your response. We tested many different students, and as you can see, it's a computer test. If deaf and good are on the same side, and the person believes that deaf, being deaf is a good thing, then they'll have a fast response when those two are paired on the same side. However, oh, and that same person will see We give this test to many different students. It was administered on the computer and it scored actually by how quickly so the test takers respond. If a person believes that being deaf is good, when they step, see deaf and good on the same side, they respond quickly. But if they see deaf and bad on the same side, then they hesitate. 
And the opposite is true for the other person. If somebody believes that being deaf is bad, then if deaf and bad are on the same side, then they respond very quickly. And if deaf and good are on the same side, then they hesitate more. So there's two groups. Those that resisted, those that think deaf, being deaf is good, we call that the group that resisted autism. And the other group, we call them, we said that they internalized autism. And to measure resistance, what we did was we gave a multiple choice answer. We tested someone's strong or weakness of resilience. And those that resisted the autism were those that had strong resilience, and those that internalized the autism were those that had weak resilience. So what are the protective factors into internalizing this autism? We found two factors that were very important. The level of signing and the level of which someone was involved in the deaf community. And there is a test administered by the by a department here that measured how involved someone in the deaf community was. If somebody was very involved in the deaf community, they actually resisted the autism and didn't internalize it as much. The group that was more resilient was more involved in the deaf community. Now we can look at a way that sign language skill is measured and that was developed by doctors at a team here as well. They're from the psychology department at Gallaudet. Those that had a high sense of resilience and resisted the autism were actually more skilled signers. So why would that, why would these two things be a factor in how well someone can resist autism? Our theory is that it's something called deaf capital, meaning that being involved in the deaf community and sign with the deaf community, you learn different information and about different life experiences. So when adversity strike, you're better, you're well able to handle it. You're, you're better able to handle adversity. <clears throat> Remember that term, linguisticism? Well, that's a big problem. People that don't want to teach ASL to deaf children. And how many, it was less than 25% of hearing families that sign with a deaf family member. That is a problem. So to summarize, So why does linguisticism still exist? We're not entirely sure. But we need more leaders and more educators in our field to figure out this information.